Hello mate and welcome. In this video we're going to try and explain the concept of classes and object-oriented programming as it's a topic that still confuses many people. Before I get started a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon that really helps me out and of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons your names will be running across the bottom of the screen. If you are interested in supporting the channel you can find out how to do so in the description down below. Prior to object-oriented programming in order to code anything was a considerable undertaking. For example, if I'm going to I'm going to write something in pseudo code for us here now. Let's say we wanted to create a tree. So we would have to give the tree a name. Let's call it a maple. Then we'd also have to say uh, tree height. Equals, let's just say uh, six meters. Then we'd have to give it a, a say number of branches would be. Let's just say, for argument's sake, it's two twenty-five. Oh, that's no, that's not how we do that. Twenty-five. And then we'd give it another property. We'd say a uh, tree color brown leaf color red uh, let's say what else uh, syrup output in liters per year for example we could just say something like 20 I don't actually know I'm not a, uh, a syrup manufacturer but you know just a random number there you could say number of number of leaves Equals, I don't know, like 10,000 or something, maybe. It's a weird number of trees. The list of properties that we could add to this tree go on and on and on, which is fine. If we're just defining one tree, no problem whatsoever. The issue comes when we want to create multiple trees. So let's say we want to create another tree. We're going to have to create a whole new set of variables like this and the thing is we can't reuse the variable names because we've already used them for this tree so now we're going to have to call it tree name one tree height one number of branches one color one and so on and then we're going to have to edit the variable let's just say this one's called a birch and we could change all of these um, I'm pretty sure birch trees don't have a syrup output but we, we can do this for any number of trees. We'd have to keep copying and pasting and pasting and pasting. By the time we've generated a very small number of trees, let's say we just have 20 trees, hardly what you would call a forest. We've already had to rewrite this code that number of times. That's a lot of code. That's a lot of wasted code. And the problem is, if I want to cycle through all of these trees and find a specific one that has a specific value, for example, if I'm looking for a, a tree that has a syrup output of 200 liters a year, then I'm going to have to write an if check, if syrup output equals 200, and I'm going to have to copy and paste that for syrup output one, syrup output two, syrup output three, syrup output four. So I'm gonna to have to check every single one of these trees individually. And you can see already that all I'm doing is I'm looking for one tree that has a value of 200 in the syrup output field. And for every single tree that I define, I'm going to have to check them. So I'm gonna to have to write a check for each single one, which, you know, for 20 trees is 20 if statements. The point of this is, is that in order to do this logistically before object-oriented programming was an absolute nightmare. Now let's go into object-oriented programming and let's create a class. So we're going to call our class. Again, this is pseudocode and we're going to call the class tree. And it's going to be an object like so. Now we're going to have to define. Um, yes, I have misspelled object there. Let's correct that. Let's hope no one saw. Now we're going to have to define 
what happens when we create an instance of this class. An instance, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term, is just a copy of that uh, object so, or a type of object. So for example, a, uh, a, a tank is a type of vehicle, a car is a type of vehicle. So we could have a class of vehicle with a set number of properties and then we can create different instances of that class. So we've got class tree. So we're gonna have to define what happens when we instantiate when we create a copy of this class and we're gonna to have to give it properties, for example, name, uh, height, weight, width, um, number of roots, number of branches, number of leaves, syrup, output and we can create any number of properties within this uh, this class here we can even tell the programming language that we're using what the default values for these things are i.e if i don't name if i don't give it a value it's going to give itself a default value which is really useful because it means we haven't got to enter data where there is none to enter so if i don't know what the syrup output of a birch tree is i don't have to put it in <clears throat> i just put in zero jobs are good or whatever or just leave it blank for the default now i can create a number of trees so let's just say um we can create a list let's create a list of trees so we're going to say tree list equals an empty list like so and then we can just say tree list append <clears throat> again pseudocode and then we can add a tree and then we just input the values so we can give it its name or whatever we just copy them grab all of these stick them in here and then let's just imagine that i've actually added values to all of this thing and then i can just do that however many times I want. I can just add another tree to the end of the list and it will add it to the to the list of classes. Perfectly fine, no problem at all. Now, if I want to search through my tree list to find one that has a specific value, all I have to do is say for each tree in tree list, cycle through them and say if tree.name equals birch then do something now what i have achieved there in 17 lines of code is basically everything that i've achieved in the previous uh, indication the previous explanation of what the non-object oriented programming was capable of and i've only used 17 lines of code and I can add any number of loops and checks and all that sort of thing that I want with very little code. And remember, when we are creating any kind of software, any kind of program, we want to minimize the amount of code and the amount of copy and pasting and typing that we have to do. And um, using object-oriented programming, we make this much less labor intensive and much simpler for our code and for our interpreter to actually do. The computer is not gonna take anywhere near as long to cycle through this because there's considerably less code. Less code means less memory used. Less memory used means fast operations, as well as, in this case, making it much simpler for the person creating it. Because now I can create as many trees as I want. I can just keep on going. I can just add as many different trees as I want, just change each one of these properties for the individual tree, and then if I'm looking for a specific one, I can cycle through it like that. This way makes it far easier to create something such as a forest in a game which requires multiple instances of a tree. So for example, if I were to add an X and Y coordinate to my class like this, and even a model, so for example, a 3D model could be like tree underscore one dot obj and then for each different tree can have a different model it'll have different x and y coordinate and it'll just when when we put it into unity or whatever 3d engine we're using 
then we can use these values to actually put the tree, the correct tree model in the correct place. Much, much simpler than having to write out every single variable for every single property of every single tree individually and then search through each and every single tree because I think you'll, you'll, you will agree if we had to replicate the code from the previous example thousands of times enough for us to make a forest or to populate an island or an environment with trees that's going to take an awful long time for our code to decipher and it's just going to slow things down games like um, all of these survival games such as minecraft and things like that would take a considerably longer period of time to run in fact a lot of them wouldn't run at all using the old coding method object-oriented programming has made it much 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 easier to achieve these simple results and this can be done for things like databases as well you can create a database if you have for example a person class you can give them a name height weight um, age gender whatever you want to put in there and then you can just iterate through and search for people by their name by their surname by their education whatever properties you give that class you can search by and makes life a hell of a lot easier I hope that's helped clear up some of the murk for you and helps you understand why object-oriented program is such a powerful tool let me know I think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right bye bye